Welcome back. We're starting with the heart in this um, chapter 19. The cardiovascular system, we've already talked about blood, also has the heart and blood vessels. The function of the cardiovascular system, the major function, is to push blood through our system so we can get nutrients to our cells and get the waste products away. So one of the big functions then is transportation. And it's continuously sending blood throughout our arteries to our capillaries and then back to our veins so that it can come back to our heart. Perfusion, definition-wise, is the amount of blood per time per gram of tissue. So the delivery of the blood to our tissues. And we need our heart to do this. If our heart stops pumping, the blood can't move. So components of the cardiovascular system, we've talked about blood, like I said, in chapter 18, but we also have blood vessels. So blood vessels include the arteries, the capillaries, and the veins. Arteries are always carrying blood away from the heart. And veins always carry blood back to the heart. Um, in general, arteries have oxygenated blood, but this is not always the truth. And in general, veins have deoxygenated blood, but again, this doesn't always occur. The capillaries are the site where gases are exchanged, where nutrients are exchanged with our cells. So in the lungs, carbon dioxide leaves the blood and moves into the alveoli, and then we exhale. In the lungs, oxygen moves into the blood um, after we have inhaled and got the oxygen in our lungs. So there's an example of capillary exchange. And we'll be talking a lot about capillary exchange um, as we go through this, well, the next chapter, actually, okay? The heart, then, is the center. This is like the hub um, where all the roadways are going to either exit or lead back to the heart. And... Um, all the blood has to constantly be circulated through the heart. So the heart is the hub of this entire system. If the heart fails, the entire system fails, and we die. The heart has four different chambers, and it has two distinct pumps, a left-sided pump and a right-sided pump. So here you can see the heart... Um, has been dissected, so this is a, a coronal section. You can see the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart, and they've colored it so that you can identify you know, the differences. So on the right side of the heart, we have a right atrium and a right ventricle. The left side, we have a left atrium and a left ventricle. Blood moves into the right atrium from our body system, the blood then moves from our right atrium through this tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And then it's going to move out through this semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk and to the lungs. Blood comes back from the lungs to the left atrium. It moves from the left atrium to the left ventricle through this bicuspid or mitral valve. And then blood moves through this semilunar semi valve, semi-atrial, I don't know what that is, semilunar valve into the aorta, and it moves out to the body system. So our atria are our receiving chambers. They take in blood either from our body or from our lungs. And then the ventricles are the discharging chambers, and they either discharge to the body or to the lungs. And you can see the color code. Uh, typically, blue is associated with the uh, 
an oxygenic environment, so there's less oxygen in blue blood than there is in red blood. And so this side, the left pump, has a lot of oxygen. It just came from the lungs. The right pump has little oxygen because it just left, or it, it didn't just leave. It just came from the body system, and we gave all of our oxygen to our cells. There are some vessels, they're called, they're blood vessels, they're called great vessels. These are the largest vessels of the body, largest, I should say, thickest or largest lumen of the body, blood vessels, not longest. Um, here we have the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is an arter, is a trunk that leads to the pulmonary artery, so it's, it's colored pink here. Here's the ascending aorta. It's another artery, so it's colored pink. Here we have the superior, and right down here you can see a little tiny piece of that inferior vena cava. These are veins, so they're colored blue. Now I mentioned that typically blue is deoxygenated, or and um, pink is oxygen rich, but I also said that arteries aren't always oxygen rich, and veins aren't always oxygen poor. Pulmonary trunk is the trunk that leads to the pulmonary arteries, and it is actually oxygen poor. So it's colored pink here because it's an artery, but it is still an oxygen poor vessel. And here's the information I just talked about. So the heart has two sets of valves. It has a um, set of valves called atrioventricular valves or AV valves, and here is one of the AV valves. It's the tricuspid valve. Here's another valve called the bicuspid valve. When we go through the heart and lab, you'll get to see these valves up close and personal. They also have semilunar valves. So here we have a pulmonary semilunar valve, and here we have an aortic semilunar valve. These lead to the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. The AV valves control blood flow from the atria to the ventricles. And the semilunar valves control blood flow from the ventricles to either the lungs or the system. So we have different routes that carry blood. I told you that we have um, distinct two different pumps associated with our heart. Um, and each of those pumps circulates blood differently. Pulmonary circulation is right-sided circulation. Systemic circulation is left-sided circulation. So with pulmonary circulation, we're taking deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart, from the right atrium, moving it to the right ventricle, and out through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the right and left pulmonary arteries. This blood is going to move then to the lungs, where at the capillaries will have gas exchange. And then it comes back as oxygen-rich blood, and moves to the left side of the heart through the pulmonary veins. Systemic circulation starts on the left side, so it moves from the left atrium to the left ventricle through that mitral or bicuspid valve, and then it's going to lead through the aortic semilunar valve out to the aorta and then to our, all of our body system. So our head, all the way down to our toes, all the regions of our body. And gas exchange occurs, nutrients are exchanged at the cells, and then blood is brought back through the superior and inferior vena cava to the right atrium. So this is a basic pattern, a very basic pattern. You need to know a little bit more than that, actually a lot more than that. So. So this is a diagram showing circulation of the heart. We start here. Here's your superior and inferior vena cava going to the right side of the heart. This is the right atrium. 
blood flows through this tricuspid valve to the right ventricle, and then it moves out through the, semi, the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk, and then it moves to the right and left pulmonary arteries. The arteries lead to the arterioles, which lead to the capillaries. So in the lungs, we have capillary exchange. And oxygen comes into the lungs, or into the blood, and carbon dioxide leaves the blood. So the venules that lead from the capillaries will bring blood back through four pulmonary veins. These are oxygen-rich veins that drop blood off into the left atrium as oxygen-rich. So the left atrium is filled with oxygen-rich blood. It moves through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, it pumps out through the aortic semilunar valve and into the aorta. The aorta then leads to all of our body cells. So we have branches off the aorta that go up into our brain, branches that go down to our arms, to our abdominal region, to our legs, to our toes. And then blood comes back through the veins into eventually the superior or inferior vena cava and are dropped back into the right atrium. Here's pulmonary circulation only. And then here is systemic circulation. So I'm going to play a song that I think is very fun. Uh, this is actually from Happy Days. So if you've ever watched Happy Days, you'll love it. If you've never watched Happy Days, you need to watch it. So, super fun song. I hope you enjoyed it. So, the atria and the, or not the atria, the ventricles have to release the same amount of blood to each side. And if they don't, we can have an imbalance in the amount of blood that we have. Um, the amount of blood that is released on both sides is equal, so the amount of blood that comes back on both sides is equal. Um, if you have too much blood being released on one side or too little blood being released on one side, then you're going to end up having um, edema on the opposite side. So you can have pulmonary or systemic edema. Systemic edema occurs when the right ventricle isn't pushing as much blood out as the left ventricle is. And what happens is blood pools in the right or in the left side or in the system because it can't take in more blood. Pulmonary edema occurs when the left ventricle is not pushing as much blood out. So the blood is staying in the pulmonary circulation. And in both cases, it can cause a lot of problems. Um, including eventually uh, death if it's not fixed. I'm going to stop here, and then we'll pick up with part two, cardiovascular system, the heart, next. Bye.